Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over one of the most popular openings in the game, the Roy Lopez. And I actually really like using the Roy Lopez, especially against weaker opponents. Uh, if you're playing a gambit opening or kind of a unorthodox opening, there's always a lot of unknown variables that can sneak up and bite you. But with the Roy Lopez, it's pretty much a straightforward game and the higher rated player should win. There's not a lot of craziness that goes on or unexpected moves that you probably haven't seen before. So we're going to go ahead and get into it and kind of go over some of the key concepts to keep in mind when you do play the Roy Lopez and hopefully this will help. So the Roy Lopez starts out pawn to e4, black responds pawn e5, white develops his knight, knight to f3, black responds um, knight to c6 and then bishop pins down the knight on the third move with bishop to b5 um, now right away you can see on white's second move um, white is bringing his knight into the game attacking this pawn on the e5 square trying to challenge the center of black black develops his knight adding a defense to this pawn and so white's going to go ahead and come in and pin this knight anytime that black uh, moves this pawn which he eventually will to gain center control with his pawn um, his knight's going to be pinned down to his king he can't move his knight because his king would be in check so this right here is the Roy Lopez now there are many 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 variations of the Roy Lopez as far as what black can do how white can respond we're gonna get into some of the main lines just so you know some of the key concepts um, the first most popular line that you will see is black responding a6 and he'll do this for a couple reasons the main reason he's trying to alleviate this pin on the black knight um, White can do two things, and we're going to kind of go over um, his two options here. Obviously, one, he can take this knight, and the second thing is he can go ahead and retreat and wait for a better opportunity. Now, um, in the exchange variation, which we'll look at right now, which is um, bishops takes knight on c6, um, basically black's going to respond, pawn takes d6, and Black has a double pawn um, right here, and that's very key to look at because later on down the road, you always want to find a weakness that your opponent has and try to exploit it. Um, in this case, anytime you can get pawns stacked on top of each other, that is that is not good for Black. So you're definitely going to want to exploit that. Um, but at the same time you want to figure out what you gave up and why gave up his light squared bishop and for any of you who have watched other of my videos know that the light squared bishop is probably white's best minor piece the minor pieces being the knights and the bishops only because it takes a stab at this very crucial f7 square and f7 is the weakest point in black's defense uh, mostly because when he castles uh, his king will be on g8 and the f7 square if pinned down by the light square bishop cannot move and you can get some very tactical forks in here um, pinning down this piece so that is something to keep in mind when you play the exchange variation that yes you do give black a double pawn but at the same time you're giving up your most powerful minor piece so if you are very good at exploiting a weakness and you feel that you can play without your pair bishop um, then go ahead use the exchange variation it is still very good for white you just need to keep that in mind uh, black does have good compensation as far as he still has both his bishops which is pretty lethal um, especially in an opening game in an open game uh, where there's not a lot of cluster in the middle which can you know it's still up in the air as far as if this is going to be an open game with not a lot of pawns or a closed game with um, not a lot of opening for the bishop to move. We're going to go over a different move if you really like your bishop pair and don't want to sacrifice at the beginning. Uh, I myself play this variation just because um, I really like to keep my light square bishop just because of the um, 
the possibilities that he has, especially against this weakness of the f7 square. So um, he has two options. Obviously, the bishop can come to uh, c4, or he can come to a4. And it's recommended just that the bishop comes down to a4 for two reasons. Um, the first one is just to obviously get out of the way of the attack from the uh, black pawn, but you always want to um, keep going with the attack that you have, and white has this pin right here on the black knight, uh, so to get it right off the um, off the pin right away uh, it's kind of self-defeating. If we were going to do that, we should have moved our bishop to c4 in the first place, but we did not. And from here, a lot of times, black's just going to respond um, pawn to b5, especially if he moved a6. He eventually, if not on this next move, he's going to move pawn to b5. And then from here, you're simply going to move bishop to uh, b3. And as you see, this is a ni nice little outlet. Uh, we are eyeing down the f7 square. Um, if any time black tries to promote his pawns down here, and try to bring the force the bishop off this square. Uh, White at any time has a nice little nifty maneuver that he can just move um, his pawn to a3, and he can easily have a nice little outpost for his light square bishop on a2. Um, and he can just eye down this f7 square the entire game and have just constant pressure on the king side of black. Um, from here, you'll normally see black develop either one of two ways. He's eventually going to bring his bishop to um, e7, and he's eventually going to bring his knight to f6. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at f6, even though both of them will eventually happen. Now, as you can see, this knight is eyeing down this e4 pawn of white, but we're going to go ahead and castle in this situation, because if black tries to capture here, uh, we can always bring our rook, we can always bring our queen into the mix, and after he moves his knight for safety, uh, we can go ahead and capture with our knight here, and if he then recaptures with his knight, we can then take with either our queen or rook, and the king will be in check. So, very good situation for us. And this right here um, is one of the most common um, opening looks that you'll see from the Roy Lopez if you're playing the non-exchange variation. Uh, if you're playing the exchange variation, obviously the knight and the bishop will not be here, and you'll have doubled pawns on the C file. Um, but from this variation, um, it's very straightforward. Black's going to continue with E7. He's going to castle. Uh, white is going to um, develop. Eventually there's going to be an attack on the uh, black king side, um, depending on where black moves, white can develop. And there's not, again, I'll say, there's not a lot of trickeration in this. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's fine tactics are going to win this game. Sometimes it can be somewhat boring. Um, as you can see, there hasn't been one piece that's been captured so far. But if you really enjoy chess and, and really enjoy outthinking your opponent on every move, this is a very good opening. So. Hope this uh, was helpful. Hope you learned a lot from the Roy Lopez. There's many variations that we're actually going to get into in some of the later videos, but please subscribe. Um, you can find out when the new videos come out. I have quite a few videos coming out in the near future, so uh, check out the website. It's going to be actually launching at the end of this week, March 20th. So hope you all enjoyed, and see you next video.